All right. Hello and welcome to yet another episode. This is episode six. Yeah, episode six of the Halted Production Show. I am Donnie, and with me, as always, is Austin. How are you doing, Austin? I'm doing wonderful tonight. How are you, Donnie? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. All right, so just baseline question for you right now. Completely not at all related to what we're talking about. Do you like the Corvette C5? I mean, yes. Who doesn't? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a V8-powered sports car that weighed under 3,300 pounds, right? I mean, what if, yeah. What if we tacked another 600 pounds onto the top of that? Would you like it? Does the horsepower increase any? No, we're actually going to take 60 away. Okay. Um, I mean, I would like it. Um, I wouldn't like it as much. Okay. Would you Would you like the ability to blow a head gasket whenever you want it? Are we talking about something with a North Star in it? We are talking about something with a North Star in it. Would so, you like to... I'm, I'm going to guess what it is. Um, I'm guessing we're talking about the XLR, which is something you know I love. <laughs> well, if you listen to episode five, uh, you will know that the XLR is not at all uh, superior to the SC430, which I love. But it's... today... We're not getting into this again. We're not getting into this again. I, I can't. I. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So let's let's talk about the uh, subpar XLR for a moment. Um, they ran from you know 04 to 09. Yep. Total built one thousand or excuse me sixteen thousand six hundred and fifty two. See, I got a number of fifteen thousand four hundred and sixty. See, let me let me tell you a secret here. You're looking at sales numbers. All right. And if you actually do the math between the number that were sold, the number that were destroyed by General Motors, you come up with 1,067 cars that are sitting somewhere. Maybe they were exported. Maybe, um, you know, they were buried under people's garages. You know, there's that mysterious hump at the 20-yard line at Giant Stadium. Maybe that's yep. a Cadillac XLR. It could be. <laughs> so what engine did they come with? They came with the North Star, but what, what North Star? It was a special-built 4.4-liter North Star engine that created 320 horsepower in an aluminum body. The, the chassis is not really a C5, and it's not really a C6. They Everything that I've read from owners is it's claimed to be a C5.5 chassis. And uh, they actually came down the same assembly line as the Corvettes in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So, yeah, they were assembled in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, you know, they're luxury roadsters. They weighed a whopping 3,840 pounds. Yes. Yeah, Which... and your average C5 Corvette was 3,247. 593 pounds shy of an XLR. So, when you get down to it, um, I think it's the perfect car. It's you know, the best I, car. Again, you're wrong. You're very wrong. But I'll humor you for a little while. Um one thing that I did see, and I, I did research, is, and, and I think this is why it makes absolutely perfect sense that it's so bloated and overpowered. The roof mechanism was a joint effort in design and build between General Motors, Porsche, which is the correct way to say it, and Mercedes-Benz. So... It's probably really over-engineered. Uh, over-engineered, and the parts are very overpriced, and it's very unreliable. So, in this, when it came out, $75,000 car, you got less horsepower than a Corvette, that weighed more than a Corvette, with an engine that was less reliable than a Corvette, but it was assembled in the same place as a Corvette. Precisely. 
So that seventy-five thousand dollars—that's what a hundred and one in today's money, around a hundred thousand, something like that. And and just so you know, you had to pay twenty-four thousand dollars more for the XLR than the Corvette. All right. See, but something the XLR has that I don't think the Corvette has, it's not the same notoriety, is um, the XLR had this this line that had a, a V up behind it, the XLR V, which is just a monster of a car. Compared to everything but the Corvette Z06? Hush. Um, <laughs> it When you put an XLR and a Corvette of the same model year beside each other. You can't tell me the XLR doesn't look a whole lot better. See, that's where we're going to disagree because I am the eternal fan of the pop-up headlights. You like the pop-up headlights, yes. And yes, when you look at an XLR, you see the front end of a truck. Yeah, I see a Silverado front end with the angry eyes. I love Silverados, okay? Um, <laughs> it, it, it adds to it. That's a feature. Yes, yes. I can see that we're going to talk a lot about features with this car. So um, do you know what the, um, on the XLR V, what the 0 to 60 was? No, go ahead and hit me. 4.6 seconds, which okay. is respectable. And then the 0 to 100 was 11.3. Um, so, you know, it was a respectable sports car. And if you bring one to a car show, like when I go to Caffeine and Octane, there's this guy that comes with a XLRV every time. It draws crowds, crowds every time. Is, is this guy in his 60s wearing a uh, button-down short sleeve collared shirt that's tucked into like khaki docker shorts and he's wearing boat shoes i can't confirm or deny that um but which means you can confirm it (laughs) i mean it all i'm saying is that regardless of who owns the car it gets looks it is a cool car it is a great looking car it has a few flaws here and there i'll admit that but it's overall, it's a good car. Um, you know, it, it, it's a good car. Oh, I'm I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you because I drove one of these to my high school prom. I took my date when I was 18 to our high school prom in a silver Cadillac XLR. And I bet he loved that. She loved that. All right, your cousin doesn't count. <laughs> You know, you know that's saying a lot for the guy that loves these things. I mean, I'm. <laughs> it's saying more about you than it is the car. So, so the the thing that gets me about these, there's still a cult following for them. Oh, I'm in the cult. I'm. I've been <laughs> inducted. I am. I am part of that cult. So. From September, so on September twenty sixth to twenty eighth, you're going up to Bowling Green, Kentucky, yes, for uh, the fifteenth annual Corvette XLR Rendezvous. Yes, because um, <laughs> the XLR is considered the cousin of the Corvette, and yeah. and you know at, at the rendezvous, uh, whatever um, whatever governing board is over that decided that the XLRs can be in it. Yeah, they're they're actually the the, the rendezvous is a complete XLR thing. It's the homecoming for the Corvettes, which, don't know if you know this, Saturn used to do the homecomings with their SLs, and they actually, or with their S-series cars, and they actually did special homecoming edition SLs that they sold. But we'll get into that at a later date and time. That's just a little bit of trivia information for you. All right, But yes, so... because these are Corvette cousins, quote-unquote, they are accepted at 90% of the, what is it, Corvette owners of America meets and cruises yep. and everything. And as a member of the Corvette owners group of America, <laughs> I frown upon that. Uh, all right. I mean, it, you being a member of that is, does not surprise me. It, yes. it doesn't surprise me at all. 
Yes, I had a yellow C5 convertible with a beige interior. And I wore all my Tommy Bahama shirts to Daytona. And I stood around in a parking lot with other da- or, uh, other Corvette owners and just stared at our cars. So I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at the Wikipedia page, as I do. And it says it also came with the 4.6 liter North Star. The 4.4 was the supercharged version. Yeah. Okay. So that was me misspeaking earlier. I yes. apologize, listeners. I. So it had the 4.6, which um, came which is the stock. the worst engine in the world. Which came stock with 320 horsepower and was mated to a six speed automatic transmission. Yeah. You could only get it in an automatic. That's why these are no good. <laughs> I mean, I think if we somehow got one to Freddy, to Tavarish, he could, he could make do with something. You know, I'm not saying that, because here's the thing, because they are Corvette chassis, ish, the, in my mind, you should be able to get a C5 drivetrain from the dampener pulley on the front of the crankshaft to the uh, back of the transmission. So basically the engine, the torque tube, the rear trans you should be able to get all of that and maybe bolt it up, which makes me think it would be very easy to put a manual in one of these. It, it should be, theoretically. Yeah, we're going to have to get one and try it. Oh, yeah, you know, we're going to go buy one of these, which, when you jump into that, there's actually a lot available. How many do you have for sale near you? I I had this I, up not... Because I feel like I live in the heart of the country that would buy Cadillac XLRs. You know, I'm 15 minutes from Daytona Beach. You know, this is this is golf country. This is retiree country. This is, you know, I'm over 65. I'm going to Cracker Barrel at 5:30 on a Wednesday morning country. So within 100 miles of me, um, just on Facebook Marketplace, there are nine. One of them being an XLRV. For have, a whopping $42,000. I have four available to me. And and there's actually one in Jacksonville that's quite... It's listed at twelve nine. It's a first year 04. It's black. I'm looking at one very similar. 04, black, but substantially less. How much? 8-8. Eight, eight. $8,800 buys you a Cadillac XLR these days. All right, trivia time. Did... I'm willing to bet something doesn't work. E- everything doesn't work. That, that's the point. Oh, um, this one's got aftermarket 20s on it, too. All oh, right. This is pretty baller. i got to send you this one. So, we, we need, um, of all the cars we need, we need this one. So, a little bit of trivia. Um, it was the first production Cadillac with what? First production Cadillac folding hardtop. Radar adapted adaptive cruise control. It was the first caddy really? with that. Yep. So this was the beginning of the end for human driving cars. I mean, may it, for Cadillac at least. <laughs> Let's see. So we got that one for $8,800. You sent me this one, this 04. Yeah, this is the one I'm looking at. And it's the aftermarket wheels on this almost make it for me. I don't like the aftermarkets on it. I I don't. Like they're. It's very they're, similar in condition to, oh my God, he has a pair of them. Yeah. He has a pair of them. Um, he has a pair of XLRs and an El Camino, and it's a mid '70s El Camino, and it looks like he's got like a drag scoop on the hood. So you know that thing's a fire breathing, uh, beautiful car. This is um, very close to the condition of the one that I found. Very close. I mean, I have another one, and 
Another 0-4 for 10-9. 0-5 for 10-9. 08 for 20, 08 for 20, 04 for 12, 5, 08 for 29. You know what I'm not seeing, though? I'm not seeing a one owner car listed. I would imagine that I would find one that's one owner. I haven't read anything on it. Let's see. I'm going to the 2908, and it's not telling me any information. Oh, it's almost too nice to drive, apparently. No, I'm not finding any one owners. Seems like you'd find them. So, yeah. let's... This doesn't... Because I never see, I never see them on the road. And And honestly, every time I see one which is maybe one every six months. I, I'm just, it's one of those things that it just reminds you, oh yeah, those were made. There's one around my house that's driven occasionally. I see it. I actually saw it a couple days ago and it, it reminded me of the episode that I had to actually do the research on. <laughs> but you, you know what, you know what I find hysterical about this? What? This, this thing is a, let's say boutique automobile, right? All right. Let's call it up there with, you know, high-end Mercedes and BMWs and all that, right? Yep. You know what I've never seen for like an AMG Mercedes or even an Alpina BMW? What? An owner registry. That's true. Um, you I know mean, what I've found for the XLR? <laughs> an owner registry. I have in front of me the current up-to-date Cadillac XLR owner's registry. And what type of, are, are there a lot of Marks and Pauls and Rogers? I'm not reading names. I'm not going to read names off on the, on the uh, air here. However, <laughs> I will say those two cars that we were looking at were one of 404 built in 2004. Really? Really? I have that number in front of me. However, do you know what the rarest color for 2004 was? What are we looking at? Rarest color. We're looking at 33 made, right? So that would be the Neiman Marcus Special Edition yes, Ultraviolet. Yes, Neiman Marcus. You could buy a Cadillac at Neiman Marcus. I mean, you can get a Mary Kay Cadillac, so... Yeah, but that you have to be awarded. This you could walk into a department store and purchase. That almost sounds like a challenge. <laughs> walk into a Neiman Marcus. Excuse me, I would like a Cadillac. Well, sir, do we have the product for you? Well, I, I know that they're doing it. A friend of mine actually just bought a uh, Neiman Marcus Camaro. What? It's like a it's like a bluish purple. It's just it's weird. And uh, he actually he bought it at a dealer. It was a it was a trade in. So GM still does these weird things with Neiman Marcus. So my question to you, as a member of the Corvette Club of America, <laughs> as a Corvette lover, and an SC430 lover, an XLR hater. Would you buy one? <laughs> You're going to have to sell me hard on one. You're going to have to sell me hard. And actually, I, I take that back. I have seen them. I have seen a couple that have been done as donks. And we know my love affair for donks. You love donks. <laughs> I actually found one that's a slab. Are you familiar? Me. Are you familiar with the Houston uh, phenomenon of a slab? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, slab S L A B stands for slow, loud, and banging. Because that's what these cars are. That's exactly what they are. And <laughs> and this has like a candy purple paint job. Look at those it rims. Has, it has the gold uh, 
84s on it with the spokes that hang out. It's got the, you know, the mesh grill. And if you look, it's got a purple dashboard. I wish I had better pictures of this car. I just... Who has the money to do that? I mean, I don't. I don't have the money to just do stupid things to cars. I wish I, I had the money to do the stupid things that I want to. to oh, cars. God, don't we all? We <laughs> Even if we had the money, we would no longer have the money. Exactly. But, yes, there's, there's one XLR that I would own, and I just sent it to you. That's the only way. Or if you could find one that's a donk, that's the only way that I would own one. So you're saying if somebody, if you found an 04 for five grand, seemed to be in good condition, you wouldn't buy one? No, because you can get a Corvette for that price. But this stands out. A Corvette is just another in a sea of Corvettes. You don't want another. You don't want to be just a fish in the sea. You want to be swimming against the grain, against the current. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. I'm, I'm drinking Coke. Um, you won't be going against the current. Sponsor? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that'll happen. I can dream. We can all dream. Just my dreams are very different. Please don't share them. So, so continue, <laughs> continue selling me on this XLR. So not only is it a very distinguished car, a recognizable car, it's affordable for a sports car. I mean, it gets you, A, into the Corvette's owner's club. You get to go to the rendezvous. You get to have a blast. But you can also go to, like, all right, so say you go to your local Cars and Coffee in your C5, C6 Corvette. How many people are going to stop and look at it? I can tell you the people that uh, will stop and look at it are probably retired. And they own the exact same car probably meanwhile you show up in one of these people look at it i mean it they may not be diving into it you know doing deep dives on it but they stop they look they're cool as you said earlier you see one driving along the road you stop and you look at it yeah but you don't look at you don't look at it and get excited oh god i do salivate and you know, I, I've never pranced up and down inside my car and reached for my phone when I've seen an XLR. I have. <laughs> so now, it, in, in all fairness, I don't do that when I see a Corvette because I see tons of Corvettes. You see them all the time. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. But at the same time, it, they're just so much better at. They're just. I'm not going to say a better car, because. When you get down to mechanical wise, they have the North Star in them, and that can't be overcome. <laughs> but if you get one with like the head gaskets already changed out, already replaced, it may be worth picking up. See, I the only way to get me into one is something outlandish, like with twenty twos and butterfly doors. I'm going to go find one on Copart. <laughs> I'm going to find one, and I'm going to build you one. And it is going to be huge, ridiculous. I'm going to have the same people that spray-painted Freddy's SC300, have them spray-paint it, and then I'm going to force you to drive it and be like, is this what you wanted? Hey, Austin. That's exactly what you want is the problem. I, I, know, I know that you want to find one on copart guess what i'm looking at my favorite website in the world which is carpart.com sponsor and what's the um, parts availability there's not even any listed in junkyards none there has to be none zero i don't believe you there's there's no listing for it per well, this then. website the xlr does not exist well, you heard it here, folk. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. It doesn't exist. Well, I would, like, I, I would buy one. I would buy one, no doubt. 
it wouldn't it, i would buy one and it would be just like every other corvette every other xlr it would sit in my garage i would take it out on weekends and it would be fun see that's that's the thing i i could never own a car that i would be afraid to drive to work i wouldn't be afraid to drive it to work it would just i mean i own three cars i'm afraid to drive to work because they won't make it there my yugo when fixed <laughs> has made it to a work before um my jeep once the seats are in it i would take it to work my lexus i would not take to work nope not at all would not even attempt to take that to work simply because have you seen it i've driven it it would make it there unless i came to an incline or a hill or a, or a speed, speed bump, bump or a pebble yeah other than those things it's fine i have I'm to take be off... late for work why because there's a leaf in the road i have to take off the bumpers in order to get down my driveway <laughs> and it's not an understatement i do have to do it so let's see i lost my format paper I, i've just been i've just been <laughs> we, rambling this entire time we just we, we've gone off okay so so back to topic here <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I've driven one. I think I'm good. I mean, if somebody gave me the keys to one, it would be very hard to not drive it a couple times, but I can, I can spend so, I could sell that and buy an SC430. The, don't even <laughs> don't even don't even say that it, all right folks so thank you all for listening um it has been a pleasure talking about this wonderful car you know i think with that with the mention of the sc430 it is time to go you can find us on twitter you can find me at what what am i I believe it's Austin's Garage YT. Austin's Garage YT. Donnie, what are you? Uh, DM Petruniak. P-E-T-R-U-N-A-K. And you can find the show on Twitter. You can hear the show on um, YouTube and on Podomatic. And I just want to thank you all for listening. I mean, I'm having a blast doing this. I know we're not in the groove yet, but we will be. And I, I like how you're you're so offended that I wouldn't buy an XLR that you're ending the show. I'm I'm offended that you would buy a 430 over the XLR. <laughs> I, I'm ending the show because of well, that. It, it is well, an executive decision. Hang and... on a second. I I have something. I want to I want to question this. Okay. Oh. This is this is going to be our first postscript. All right. All right. If you look up the trunk volume while the top is down for the XLR. I'm guessing you can fit a carton of milk in it. Okay. It can't be much with the it's a huge hard top. It is a huge hard top. What what is it? I I don't have the number in front of oh, me. Oh gosh. Are you saying I have to look it up? I'm I'm asking you to look it up. Um, XLR. Because I'll and and I'll I'll preface this. Four point four cubic feet when it's down. Okay, four point four cubic feet. Eleven point six with the top up. Okay, okay. So with it up, you can fit three sets of golf clubs in. When it's down, you could fit maybe your driver. In the trunk right yes trunk space with the top reclined 8.8 .8 cubic feet in the 430 you can still fit two sets of golf clubs in the trunk when's the last time you went golfing we're talking about the target demographic for the vehicle we're not talking about me personally austin <laughs> i don't think you if you if i were to take you to sports authority i don't think you could pick out a golf club I know what I, I have a set of golf clubs. 
I live in Florida. I have a set of golf clubs. I have a pet alligator. And yes, I'm not afraid of hurricanes. All right. (laughs) With that, we can go ahead and end the show. All right. Now you do the outro. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody that's uh, sat through the last 30 some minutes of us rambling about a very subpar vehicle. We appreciate it again. And uh, for Austin and myself, thank you and have a great day.